Good morning, everybody, and welcome to today's Coffee with Craig. This is where we talk about uh, everything relating to firearms and the Second Amendment, politics, culture, movies, you name it. Try to bring to it a little bit of what I like to call uncommon sense, because as we're kind of starting to find out, uh, well, common sense is, is not that rare. So we'll bring to it a little bit of uncommon sense in order to defeat some of the common nonsense uh, that folks seem to be talking about out there. So please make it a point to like and share this video feed on Facebook or on YouTube. Uh, let your friends know about where you where they can go in order to, to hear about and talk about uh, the Second Amendment the way in which it's supposed to be, a constitutionally enumerated civil right. So as we get into today's topic, um, this is an interesting one because, you know, after the marches last week where you had, uh, you know, the youth, youths from all over the country uh, decide that they were going to march and holler into microphones talking about uh, talking about how we need to take away the rights of uh, law abiding citizens to be able to uh, keep and bear arms, to be able to defend themselves. Uh, it, one of the things that was interesting is one of the biggest, one of the greatest solutions uh, that people seem to be talking about is uh, eliminating the ability for 18 to 20 year olds to be able to purchase long guns. Uh, you may or may not be aware, but in some states or in most states, uh, if you are under the age of uh, 21, but over the but 18 years older, uh, you can actually purchase a long gun, and so. Uh, there's a big move to try and make sure that uh, that you basically young people, these young people that are out there, uh, lose that right. Now, what I want to talk about today was kind of kind of some problems uh, with that idea, and I wanted to start by by looking at a guy. Now, there was an article as I was researching to talk about this. There was an article that was done by a guy who wrote writes for this website called The Tab, right? Uh, his name is Corey da Cody Davis, and uh, Cody went in at 20 years old to purchase, uh, uh, to, went in to purchase uh, a long gun. He wanted to see what it was like to be able to purchase a long gun. And the interesting thing about this particular story is, you know, he went in and so many of the things that he talked about were just like, oh, my God, I cannot believe that they're doing this. So he goes into the gun store and he goes to look at various different firearms and they're like, oh, wow, and they just they just handed me a shotgun to look at as if they handed him a loaded shotgun. Uh, then they talked to him about being able to purchase an AR-15 and, you know, and he said, well, yeah, you know, well, I'd like to take a, per a picture with it. And so he was astounded that they let him take a picture with it. Once again, I'm still kind of wondering, OK, what's, you know. What exactly is the horrendous thing that they did here? So he finally just said, okay, well, I'm going to go ahead and purchase it. And he started filling out the paperwork and then uh, then actually did not go through with the sale. The funny part about it was at the very end of the story, and I'll, I'll read you kind of, the, the, kind of the, uh, the synopsis here he gave at the end, which kind of tells you, it will give you a little bit of information. He says, um, uh, where are we at? Here we go. He said, Seconds. It took seconds for the salesman to take an AR-15 off the shelf and begin to sell it to me. If I had if I had stayed for maybe three minutes longer to fill out less paperwork than I did to, for the hiring process at my school's bookstore, I would have driven home with an AR-15. No delay, no extensive background check, just my recent expired driver's license, my vehicle registration, and filling out some paperwork. Ultimately, these are the laws we have. This shop hasn't done anything wrong, but if a 20-year-old college student can walk into a gun shop uh, and be out in, in minutes with an AR-15, you believe nothing needs to change. You need help. Okay, so let's talk about this real quick. So first of all, uh, let's start with the fact that, uh, one, this is a 20-year-old. Um, in Every state that I know of, at the age of 18, you are considered legally an adult. You are able to vote. You are, in some case, in many states, you are still able to smoke cigarettes. Uh, you are able to make medical decisions for yourself. Uh, you are legally held responsible uh, for anything that you for anything that you do, both uh, civilly and criminally. At the age of 18, you are now held legally. You are now held legally accountable. 
Uh, if you do something, you are tried as an adult, not as a child. So I'm, I'm starting to wonder at the age of 20, I mean, at the age of 20, I was supporting myself. Um, at the age of 20, my kids were, or, or at least my kids were supporting themselves. <coughs> um, I'm just wondering if you are a legal adult, why should you not be able to exercise your constitutional right? You have your constitutional right to free speech. Why should you not be able to exercise that? You have a constitutional right to vote. Why should you not be able to exercise that if you are an adult? Now, I realize I get it. This 20-year-old does not see themselves as an adult, and maybe that's part of the problem. But we'll, we'll talk about that in a little bit. So here's a 20-year-old that clearly does not see themselves as an adult, even though in every sense of the word legally they are. Uh, but this is an, uh, someone doesn't see themselves as an adult. Now, uh, he says that he had an expired driver's license. He actually had already paid to renew that driver's license, and he had a receipt to prove that. So uh, that whole argument was a, was a bunch of hooey. He talked about the fact that, well, the no extensive background check. Well, dude, you didn't finish the paperwork so clearly there was no background check. How could they run a background check if you didn't fill out the paperwork? See, this is the sort of stuff and the sort of ignorance that a 20-year-old, you know, a 20-year-old college student who probably, uh, well, is getting a lot more common nonsense there at the university where he's studying, uh, is, is, is pulling out. Because, see, once again, let's, going back to the idea of why this is a bad idea. Uh, first and foremost, at the age of 18, you are an adult and you have constitutional rights. And among those constitutional rights is the right to keep and bear arms. We already, in my opinion, uh, unconstitutionally restrict your ability to be able to purchase a handgun. Uh, but, but now we're going to further make it so that you can't even defend yourself in your home with a long gun, whether it be a shotgun or an AR or whatever sort of long gun you decide that you want to utilize to defend yourself. So that is issue number one. The other issue uh, with this is, is that, let, let's talk about this. The AR-15 in particular is people are trying to say, or at least the anti-gun community is trying to say that, well, this is the chosen weapon of mass shooters. Except most mass shooters aren't 18 to 21. And in fact, those that are, numbers show that, those that, are, numbers show that largely they don't use AR-15s. Um, the thing is, is that understand that when it comes to gun violence, most gun violence is not committed with long guns. Most gun violence is committed with handguns, uh, what they call gun violence. Uh, that That's issue number one. Uh, and let alone, we're talking about less than 3% are committed with long guns and even a smaller percentage are committed uh, with an AR-15. And oh, by the way, uh, even smaller percentage of those of those are committed uh, by those 18 to 20 years old. So once again, you're talking about trying to solve a problem that really does not exist. Uh, you are 10 times uh, more likely, uh, some, someone is 10 times more likely to uh, kill, the, kill someone uh, texting and driving, which is something that is very common in 18 to 20, year, 18 to 20 years old. Uh, they are much more likely uh, to ha have complications from tobacco use. Uh, actually, much, much greater. Probably, uh, I, I would say, at least uh, 100 to 1,000 times more likely. But, but these are all things, once again, that they don't want to talk about, the things that they are completely going to ignore. And if we're going to look at discrimination, because, by the way, this does represent, in fact, age discrimination, because there is no logical reason, there is no... Uh, statistical data or information that demonstrates that 18 to 20 year olds uh, are in fact at a greater risk uh, of committing crimes with long guns than anybody else. So it's plain age discrimination, which by the way, in, in a number of states, including the state of California, Oregon, uh, New York, a number of other states, uh, age discrimination uh, starts at 18, meaning you're not allowed to discriminate at the age of 18, 18 to 21 year olds. This, in fact, in many cases, in many of these states would actually violate, uh, violate that particular premise. But let's look at some of the demographics for individuals that uh, we would dare not touch. For example, uh, statistics have shown that uh, uh, a, a female 
is at a much much it is much more likely that if a female is purchasing a firearm that it is a straw purchase meaning that she is purchasing this firearm for someone uh, other than herself or someone who is otherwise prohibited from owning a firearm so why why are we not talking about eliminating the ability of women to be able to purchase firearms um let's get one now this is going to be a real sticky one uh most gun crime that is not suicide. Oh, well, if we're going to talk about suicide and suicide with guns, well, then maybe we should be eliminating white males because uh, a huge percentage, I believe over two thirds of white males uh, of those commit, who commit suicide with firearms tend to be middle-aged white males. So maybe we need to be prohibiting middle-aged white males from being able to purchase firearms. I know that there are a lot of you gun grabbers out there on the left that are saying, oh, yeah. Yeah, let's do that. Yeah, let's make sure that they these white males aren't able to purchase firearms. But let's let's go let's go to this one. Now, most gun violence that is not suicide related, most of it is related to gangs or drugs. So, maybe we should prohibit the ability of anyone that's ever used drugs or is in a gang. Maybe we need to eliminate their ability to be able to purchase firearms. Or and this is where it really gets sticky. A huge percentage of gun violence that is committed, about a significant portion, are, are by those who live in urban inner cities. Those uh, of the African-American or Latino descent, those who are black or brown. A huge percentage of those who are both victims of gun violence and those who perpetrate gun violence fall in those categories. So, in fact, much more likely... Uh, that if we're talking about legal firearm, well, not legal, legal or illegal, um, much it's much more likely that individuals fall within that category. So maybe we should prohibit them from being able to purchase firearms. But see, ultimately, though, here's the thing. In their cases, even if you did prohibit them from owning firearms, in most of these cases, those most of those cases, the firearms were obtained illegally. So even if you banned young black males and young Latino males from being able to purchase firearms, guess what? Guess what? They'd still, they, they'd still, they would still have access to firearms. Look, I'm not advocating for those things. I'm not. I don't want anybody to say that I am. But what I am trying to explain to you is this, is that arbitrarily picking out an age group over something that is anecdotal over is is foolish to say that we are going to restrict the rights of adults of law-abiding adults over something that someone who by the way we all know the parkland shooter probably should have been committed never should have been able to get his hands on a firearm uh, but that wasn't because there weren't laws in place that was because of a failure of government now if you really want to do something how about this how about eliminating the uh the uh, uh the ability of government to be prohibited from lawsuits why shouldn't the parents of the victims be able to sue uh the school and the government and the city and the the, the county sheriff and all of the state all of those folks who failed in this process why shouldn't they be able to sue them the people who knew that this individual should have been committed why shouldn't they be able to sue them? Because of their failure. Ah, oh, I bet you they'd wake up then. I bet you they fixed their process then. I bet you the government would step up and do what they're supposed to do then. Oh, but we don't want to talk about that. Well, how about being able to go after the specific government officials who failed? Go after them personally. Make them personally liable. Oh, we can't do that, though. That would make too much sense. No, instead... We're going to make it sure that law-abiding citizens lose their rights. It, it, and I know that there are people out there who are saying, oh, well, no, we've got to do something. We've got to do something. Well, no, you don't need to take the rights of law-abiding citizens. And I get it. Folks, if we are going to allow them to take the rights of, of adults age 18 to 20 years old, if we're going to allow them to take their rights, then they're going to come after other groups. They're going to come after women. They're going to come after people of color. They're going to come after white males. They, keep in mind, folks, this is, this is, this, ultimately this is the thing. All gun control has all been about making sure those people don't get access to guns. 
Those people have been black and brown people. Those people have been Latinos. Those people have been Native Americans. Those people have been the Chinese. Those people have been young people. Those people have been, uh, uh, you know, veterans. Those, they're, trust me, folks, th those people, senior citizens, they are coming after those people until all of us are those people. And the only people they want to have guns are the, uh, the civil servants who work for them. Those are the only people they want to have guns, not you or I. They don't want us to have the ability to be able to defend ourselves because, as we all know, they have a, uh, a more devious agenda uh, in store. Anyway, that's going to be it for today's Coffee with Craig. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you so much for being a part of the fight for civil rights. Please remember to like and share these videos. Let people know about the Firearms Policy Coalition. We are the home in the fight for civil rights. Got to use them or you're going to lose them. You guys take care. If you like our videos, follow, subscribe, like, and share.